it's at this point that I would point out that it's only because you've got the methodology done and you know what that is, and so you know what data that you need, you will know whether or not field work is actually required. Let me go back to the coral reefs example. Uh, the student wanted to know which abandoned oil rigs are uh, ideally situated for uh, artificial reef development, right? Okay, so I remember that as a component of that, he needed salinity information. He needed to know the salinity uh, of the ocean at different places. So it's at this point that you go, well, gee, is the salinity of the Gulf of Mexico at the spatial resolution that I need something that is available for me to download? Can I just download that and is it in the format and uh, that I need and also of the quality that I need? Or am I going to have to uh, get a grant charter a boat, purchase specific instrumentation, load it onto the boat, and spend a summer uh, going around the Gulf of Mexico taking my own salinity readings in different locations. So you have to make that judgment call. Maybe these things are something that you can uh, just download. Maybe you realize that as you're designing your methodology that you're going to need field work when you didn't realize it. That's uh, part of this. So before I conclude this lesson, I hope that you're beginning to get a feeling of the difference between how a professional GIS specialist approaches doing GIS and how an amateur might do this. Here with the collecting and the creation of the necessary data, let me tell you how many, many people who are just starting out go about this. The person will have a topic one of those undeveloped topics that we were talking about much earlier on. Let's just say for the sake of example, climate change. So they know they want to do a GIS study about climate change. They have this vague topic. The next thing they go and do is start searching the internet, doing some different searches on the internet for climate change GIS data, climate GIS data, and seeing what's out there and seeing what they can download. Maybe they come across some reasonable stuff. Maybe they come across nothing. Maybe they come across things they think are good that will end up not being so great. They download a bunch of stuff, put some stuff in some software, and then they hope that in 20 minutes, half an hour, or an hour later, some kind of magic's going to happen with the computer and that data that they just brought in from the internet is going to tell them something about climate change. And it doesn't work like that. Yes, sure, there is room for some exploratory analysis, uh, exploratory data collection. It's very natural to say, hey, well, I am interested in climate change. I, I am interested in war. I am interested in uh, biogeography in general. Let me just see what's out there. Let me search the internet and just see what kinds of data uh, I can come up with. That seems to be a very natural thing to do. And it's important to do on some level, but it's a very informal component of these six steps of GIS problem solving. Yes, sure, if you're interested in doing the coral reef project and you have to know salinity of the Gulf of Mexico, you do need to go and do some exploration on the internet to find out, is there a salinity data set that I can just use, or is this something I have to go and collect? So sure. But if you're serious about doing GIS, then you have to, you can't just be so informal and ad hoc. It will never work. You will never be able to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. Instead, you have to work through these different steps. One final note about collecting, creating data for your project. There are some incredible studies that need to be done. There are some fantastic questions that need to be answered. There are some extremely important problems that need to be solved that you can very crisply specify in the manner of our step one. And then also be able to design a very complete methodology, our step two, in order to get to that. That as it just so happens for whatever reason, the data in order to answer that question, solve that problem, collect that study is impossible to collect. I hope that that doesn't happen to you, but it's possible that you come up with a great question, you come up with the methodology, but then as it turns out, the data collection is impossible. That halts the project. You're gonna to have to go back and come up with some other question or problem that does end up having uh, data that's possible to collect.
Uh, that is sort of where that exploratory uh, analysis about the data comes in. Is this something that's out there? Is this something I can collect? Sometimes it's possible to collect, but it may require more money than you've got. That's one level. Okay, I could do this project, but I'm going to have to spend uh, six months in the field in a remote location with an entire field team that's going to require a lot of money to fund. I don't have it. Okay, well, that's going to stop the project. You're going to have to come up with some other kind of uh, idea or some other way to approach it. In addition to money, you need to think about time. What is your time window for completing this project? It may be that you need some kind of data set that can't be completed in the amount of time that you have allotted, so the project must be uh, rethought. That's something that also happens, time and money for the collection of data sets. It may also be the case that sometimes things are just not possible to collect. I had a student who really wanted to do a project on the diffusion of different musical instruments across the United Kingdom. In order to execute this project, she said she needed to know uh, the first time different kinds of musical instruments were played in different taverns and bars uh, across the UK. That's just not something that's available. It's just not something you're ever going to be able to collect. It could be a fantastic study, but it's not something that can go forward. So you have to think about that as well. The realistic ability to collect and create data sets based on what is available and what you can, cre you can cre create based on your time constraints, your monetary constraints, and other different constraints that you may have. That will alter, unfortunately, the kind of project that you can do.